parkland has already been satisfied. Uh, that was uh, met the requirements in the Anderson Frontier subdivisions. Uh, we had Anderson Frontier Park to the west, and so no further dedications required since it was already required of the Anderson First subdivision. Planning and Zoning did conduct a public hearing, and that happened on June 14th of this year, and they recommended approval with no conditions. Uh, staff's recommendation for the council is to conduct a public hearing and upon upon the proposed Palouse Prairie Edition plat and upon consideration of any testimony presented, approve the preliminary plat for Palouse Prairie Edition and adopt the Planning and Zoning Commission's reason statement of relevant criteria. And I'd certainly be able to answer any questions that you might have. Okay, before we open the public hearing, questions uh, for Mike Ray. Walter. Uh, Mike, would you go back to one of the maps? I think it's what I'm looking for is on any one of them. It's got the, the subdivision immediately south. Like an aerial map? Yes, that okay. will work. The one you just passed would have worked. Okay. There he goes. <laughs> the subdivision immediately south of the property we're talking about tonight has what appears to be a vacant lot in the northwest corner. Is that, is that a va just an undeveloped lot that's already platted for that subdivision? I've it never, is already platted. I've there, never noticed it before. Yeah, there's currently a home on there. So our imagery is from 2012. Okay. So that that's the reason. Okay. The only vacant lots are actually these corner, the two lots here on the corner of Sunnyside and Palouse River Drive. But yeah, that was a home that was constructed either last year or the year before. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Other questions for Mike? Okay, Mike. Thank you. I will open the public hearing at 7:32 and hear from the applicant. And please state your name and address for us, even though we all know who you are, Nils. <laughs> Nils Peterson, uh, director for the Moscow Affordable Housing Trust, 841 Travoy. Um, thank you, Mike, for a fine presentation. I'll take any questions that you have. I have nothing specific for you. And my engineer could not be here tonight, so oh. I get the whole baton. Okay. Uh, Art? Uh, one small one. Uh, the northwest corner of the subdivision has the two flagpole lots in it and is zoned R3, but it backs off to northeast. You know, the northwest with the two flagpole lots oh, okay. uh, abutting uh, into the R1 area. Yeah, those two guys. Uh, is lower density plan there to uh, ease a transition between R3 and R1 existing neighborhood up in there? Kind of like, is there any vision for what occurs on those two larger lots? We have no, uh, no plan or no anticipated plan for what will be built on those lots. Um, also, um, relative to two, I don't know if it's, I, my memory fails me at this point, but between uh, probably for you, Bill, uh, but between uh, two different densities of zoning, is that strictly a commercial thing where buffering is required, landscape, or does that apply to residential areas? Your Honor? Yes. Uh, it, it does apply to residential yeah. areas depending upon the, the difference in intensity of the residential zoning districts. <clears throat> so between R3 and R1, there might be buffering stipulated? I can't remember. One moment, and I can tell you. If you have any other questions, feel free, and I can get back with you on that shortly. Oh, well, that was the extent of mine. Okay, other questions before? Uh... Well, I, I wanted to follow okay. the same line of questioning that Art had with the flagpole lots, because I was hoping for um, more understanding, because that passage to get to those lots could be, you know, crowded. So I was just kind of wondering what was going to happen what were you hoping was going to happen there, maybe, on those lots? Um, so those are a standard width that is required for a flagpole. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not questioning that. Just kind of just because of the design, just curious mostly. And I, I have no specific use to tell you any use that could be put on that many square feet. Oh, okay. uh, there's one other thing that Mike didn't mention. It's an interesting restriction in this... Um, on this parcel, which is maximum building height is one story, not inclusive of a daylight basement. 
So that puts some interesting design constraints on what you can do. The slope of the hill helps tremendously to mm -hmm. make a daylight front. Okay, thank you. Bill, did you have You're an on answer for? Yes, there is no buffer yard required between the R1 and the R3 zoning districts. Okay. You would have to get to the R4 zoning district before a buffer is required. Thank you. Well, thank you, Niels. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And at this time, we'll take other testimony in favor of this preliminary plot, please. Well, please come <coughs> up here, ma'am. And uh, how we do this is uh, we ask you to state your name and address, and we go from there. Okay. Um, I'm Beth Cree, and okay. I live in Prospect Place, so that's south of the development that's that's going. And um, Could I'm you please give us your address, ma'am? I'm 2075 Sunnyside Avenue, number 8. Okay. So I'm concerned about those two lots also that are above, and they have those. I, the two the flagpole lots. Yeah, the two to. flagpole lots. If this is affordable housing, I don't see how it's going to be affordable to maintain those long driveways that are there. And it seems like that's not real conducive to the type of, you know, the development that he's trying to make there with affordable housing and it seems like instead of having two lots in the back that he could push those four that are in the middle they could go more to the kind of the northeast and then he could have a lot that goes further back he could have 12 lots instead of 13 lots and he doesn't really know what he's going to do with those two lots in the back so I'm concerned about that how that's going to become affordable housing in the long run someday. Maybe those would never get developed. Okay. So those are concerns I have. Okay. Thank you. We're gonna ask for others to come up and speak and then we'll have the applicant come back up. So now I'll take uh, any other general testimony uh, or for or against or just general and comment. Well, Niels, I'll let you if you want to come back up and tell us what you think, it'd be fine. Mr. Mayor, I appreciate the citizen input. Mm -hmm. um, the question before you is a specific platting question. That's correct. And not a question of how the plat how the lots will be developed. That is correct. Mm -hmm. So I have no need to address any particular plans. Okay. Thank Very you. good. Thank you. Any other testimony? Well, I will shut this public hearing then, 738, and let council address it. I'll go. Okay, go ahead, Art. Yeah, I think Moscow does have a demonstrated need for affordable housing and anything that can be done to provide more housing of an affordable nature, and I'm not quite sure where the cutoff for unaffordable and not actually occurs, but if uh, it can be put up with uh, twin home configurations, I think that's a, a great thing, and anything we can do to help with that is a, a great idea. Also, the fact that they're limited to one story plus a daylight basement should help mitigate any impact for the existing R1 division uh, above it. And uh, overall, I think if it can be a subdivision that gets up and running, I'm all in favor of it. I think it looks quite well laid out and should fit in with the existing neighborhoods and provide some additional housing. Catherine. Yeah, thank you for um, clarifying. I think that, that knowing the daylight, that's the question I was asking after seeing the topography. I just couldn't understand, you know, kind of what what was going to kind of feel like it was going to jam in there, just out of trying to figure out how you were thinking. So that clarified it. So thanks for that. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, I can see no problem with this, and uh, therefore I would move that we approve the preliminary plat for uh, Palouse Prairie Edition and adopt the Planning and Zoning Commission reason statement of uh, relevant criteria. Second. 
Okay, we've got a motion by Jim and a, or by Jim and a second by John to approve the preliminary path, a plat for Palouse Prairie addition and adopt the Planning and Zoning Commission's reasoned statement of relevant criteria. Further discussion? Start to roll with Walter. Aye. 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 Okay, moved on. Thank you very much. It passed. Thank you, Neil.